hear about who might come and be a part, we threw out some names, and the names I kept coming back to were our friends Ted and Ange Bryant. Uh, Ted is the lead pastor at Granger Church in South Bend, Indiana. Ange is the director of spiritual growth and development, if I've got it right. You got it. And uh, over the last few years, we've talked some about our church has become a part of a network of churches. Uh, of many of them around the southeast and our friends in South Bend. And so we've gotten the joy to know uh, Ted and Ange over the last few years. And friends, you are in for a real treat. We'll give you some more background as we go. But here's the reality of the last 24 hours. They had church in, at Granger last night, all morning today, South Bend to Chicago for a delayed flight, Chicago to Memphis <laughs> where the Brian Collier Uber service was waiting for yes. them at 5.15. <laughs> So at, as some of y'all were coming in and getting delicious fried chicken from Romy's and saying hello to me, in the back of my mind, I was going, what sermon am I preaching if they don't show up tonight? <laughs> so nobody's more excited they're here tonight than I am. We I've never it. preached in tie-dye, and I didn't want to start that this evening. Mm. So we're going to pray for Ted and Ange, and then we're just going to get out of the way and let them teach and share. So would you extend a hand as a way of laying hands on them uh, as we prepare for this time of worship tonight? God, we thank you so much for these, our friends, your servants. We thank you for their willingness to come and to invest in the life of our community of faith. Uh, whether we're here for the first time or the next time tonight, Lord, we know that you brought these friends at the right time to speak the words you've prepared to hearts that are ready to receive it. So, Lord, we invite you to move in a mighty way among us, that your Holy Spirit that is already present, that we would become increasingly aware of the way that you are working. So we offer you this time. We thank you for these friends. Uh, to you, our Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray these in all things. Amen. Amen. Join me in welcoming the Bryans Amen. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it is great, great to be here. Um, I've heard, of course, about this wonderful family, this, this community, from Brian, from Will, from Wendy. And uh, it's, just, it's just so awesome to be here. For Orchard Nights, I mean, you have a disco ball. I mean, that's just awesome. I'm not sure if it works or not, but I'm assuming it does. Um, but that's just incredible. And, and we are excited to just be a, a part of it, what God is putting on our hearts. But we also know that whenever two strangers are standing in front of you, there's two questions that go through your mind. Who are you? And why are you here? And so uh, we'll just start there. I'm Ted. Hi. Um, and I am here in part because um, I was asked, we were asked to be here by someone that we trust, someone that we believe uh, moves by what the Holy Spirit's putting on uh, his heart. And then we, we go off and we pray and we ask God, hey, God, is this something that you want us to do? Uh, we've been married for going on 25 years. We have six children, five teenagers currently. There's a lot of moving parts happening. <laughs> In our house. So we, we want to make God honoring decisions about what we do and where we go. And it was an overwhelming, I mean, overwhelming piece that God uh, wanted us to be able to meet you and just have this time together. So we are super, super pumped to be here. Super excited. And I'm Ange Bryan, and I'm here because I want to bring like hope and encouragement. Whatever your summer has been so far, you all could have said yes to all kinds of things tonight but you chose to say no to those things so that you could be here with each other. You've got colored tablecloths. You are making good things happen. Popping a little bit. And this heart of what would happen in an hour and a half each night that you could walk away feeling encouraged, feeling supported, feeling like there is truth and grace, feeling closer to each other and closer to God. So that's why I'm here. However it is we can enter in to serve you well, that's the heart that Ted and I are bringing. So thank you for the privilege and honor of hanging out with you. We walked into the room, I mean, a hot 20 minutes ago, and you can just feel goodness in the room. Yeah. So already, like, well done seeing each other, loving each other, caring for each other. It's tangible in the air when you walk in here. And we're pretty much an open book. So You can um, ask us anything. We'll interrupt each other and all that stuff, and uh, it, it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun together. So um, let's go ahead and, and get started with some of the things that we wanted to share tonight. Sounds good. So you, right now, know a few things about us. By the end of Wednesday, you'll know a hot, lot more. A lot more. <laughs> 
But you might not say that you like know us. Right now you feel like you know about us. And so to know someone, it takes some time, right? It takes quantity of time. It takes quality of time answering questions. It takes experience. And we'd say the same is true with God. So our heart is that this week it's not just about knowing about God, but like knowing him. Slowing down enough to be unhurried, to not just know things about him, but to know him in like a personal, tangible way. That he doesn't feel like a far off, distant God, but he feels good and near and powerful in really tangible ways in your everyday life. There was a time 25 plus years ago before Ted and I were married, before we were dating, and I knew about Ted oh, on our college stories. campus. <laughs> He played soccer, I ran track. I knew about him, but I didn't yet know him. You might have people in your life, you know things about them, but then once you know somebody, it's kind of different. You know if they have your back. You know if you can trust them. You know if somebody says, hey, so-and-so said, you're like, nope, they wouldn't say something like that. Or yep, that sounds just like them. Our heart is that we wouldn't talk about God this week but we would engage experiences with him that you get to feel excited, renewed, restored into what God might have and that we would continue to take steps in our faith. Again, faith, not taking steps, it's like empty routines. Maybe it feels like obligation. These are things I probably should do. And yet, if God is our best friend, and that's a choice that we get to make, each of us get to decide, you probably don't feel obligated to hang out with your best friend. You probably, say you go to lunch, you already know maybe the next time you're going to see them again before the time you're hanging out even ends. Some of you are smiling. Yes, this is true. You don't feel obligated to hang out with people you love, people you trust, people you like. We say at Granger Community Church, you actually can't fake fun. You only have fun with people you like. What would it look like to trust God in a new way that as you're taking steps, faith doesn't feel like obligation at all. It feels like an opportunity to hang out with our Savior, our best friend. Otherwise, it's like, are we just doing a bunch of rules? It's just like behavior management, and we would get tired of that, I think, pretty oh, easily. Yeah. No one has time for church. We're not playing uh, Just church. to play it, you we know? Need to be the church. Yeah. And so we want to read to you, what does it look like to live a life pleasing to God in 1 Thessalonians 4? Verses 1 through 8. I'm going to read this in the ESV, but whatever translation you have is okay. The section is called A Life Pleasing to God. It says, Finally then, brothers, we ask, we urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Right? Taking steps. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. We would say to be clear is to be kind. We've told you. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, right? That you abstain from sexual immorality. That each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one transgresses and wrongs his brother in this matter because the Lord is an avenger in all these things. And we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you, right? This free gift. So what's the reasoning behind why the Gentiles sin? It's because they don't know the rules? No, because they don't know enough about God? Is it because they're breaking the rules or just doing a bunch of things that are bad? Nope, it said right in the middle of that scripture, it's because they don't know God. We were just talking about the Bible before worship, and they were mentioning it's not just a textbook. Like, these are real people in the Bible that we'll really get to be in heaven with. <laughs> Actual people in the family of God who knew God. What's the invitation that he has for us this week? To know him. Not just read, cite stuff about him but be in real relationship because faith is more about relationship than just rules. 
And it's not just any relationship. We would say it's like the most amazing oh, yeah. relationship ever. It's life-giving. God promises full life in John 10.10. 10. It's full of impact, full of purpose. And the rules that God talks about, those are just like boundaries to protect our relationship with him. It's like him saying, when you say yes to me, there's a way that we live that we honor God and we actually honor each other. We've all got each other's back because goodness and kindness, all the fruit of the Spirit are coming out of us. It's about relationship. And so in Exodus 20, verse 1 and 2, it says, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. Like, who am I? This personal connection. Your God. Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. He's really good at rescue. I know sometimes we want a God who prevents. God's a really good rescuer and redeemer. I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And so God reminds us <laughs> and reminded them back then, I am loving and I have a sacrificial relationship for you if you want to enter into it with me. I have something to offer you. And only then does he lay out the boundaries, right? Kind of those 10 commandments, the rules. It's from relationship and for relationship that he says there's a way we could live that your heart would be at rest, your mind would be at peace and not racing. There would be, like we sang, goodness and mercy following us all the days of our life. Yeah, it really is, it really is all about relationship. Um, from relationship for relationship, I, I love that. And so one of, the, one of the passions that we have when we're teaching and preaching is that truth is shareable. Truth shareable. It's not just something for us to take in and go, oh, man, this is so good. I'm going to write this all down. No, it's not just for us. It's also for others around us. And one of the ways we talk about this is um, a story that I heard one time of our founding pastor. His name is Mark. And he, he told of uh, his grandmother who made some amazing chocolate chip cookies. I mean, these were amazing. Unbelievable chocolate chip cookies. Who likes chocolate chip cookies? Okay, good. That's right. We're never too old for chocolate chip cookies. She had made these chocolate chip cookies and she put them up on the top shelf, you know, to cool off. And she was also just in control of when the grandkids could get them, okay? And sure enough, only she could reach them and only she was in control of who got the cookies, okay? Until one day, Mark's cousin, Luke, had a growth spurt. Grandma didn't notice that he had hit puberty, okay? And now Luke can get the cookies off the top shelf. And why is this so important? Because all Luke wanted to do, didn't want to change the cookies, didn't want to mess with the cookies. He just wanted to make sure the cookies were available for all who wanted one. That's how truth is. That's how it should be in the church. It doesn't have to be on the top shelf where only certain people know the certain words and certain actions and all that stuff. No, no, we want it to be available, digestible for everybody. So wherever you're on the faith journey, some of you, this, you might, you might say you're kicking the tires of faith. I mean, maybe you show up to church every now and then, whatever. Some of you, you've been following Jesus for a long time. Listen, wherever you are on the faith journey, there's always more steps to take because God always has more for us in his relationship. And so how can we, over the course of this week, how can we not just learn and take stuff in and let God mess with our hearts and our minds and reveal all kinds of stuff? You say all the time, you don't get mad at a dishwasher for cleaning the dishes. Don't get mad at God when he's trying to clean your soul. It, the dishwasher wants to clean dishes. The laundry cleans laundry. God cleans our soul. So just let him. Let him. Don't get mad. He is trying to be helpful for a stronger relationship. And so we want it to be digestible. We want it to be available, not just for you, but who are two or three people in your life? We call these impact circles, and this is something you'll be praying about the next few days. Two or three people you see two or three times a week. That's your impact circle. God's already given you some level of impact in their life. They trust you a little bit in relationship. Who are those two or three people that maybe God just wants you to make cookies available, truth available, in a way that makes sense, in a way that they can reach it. And so when we say faith is more about relationship than rules, then the next question is, well, how do you grow a relationship? 
Well, there's four main dials in how you grow any relationship. The, and, and what we call it is, it's just an acronym called TEAM. Time, energy, attention, money. Time, energy, attention, money. Time, energy, attention, money. You got it. TEAM. Wherever your team goes, relationship grows. Okay? Wherever your team goes, relationship what? That's right. Okay, now. I know it's getting late. You got this, too, below. You got this. I know. I'm, I'm very excited. It's late. <laughs> I get that. But wherever your team goes, relationship grows. And these are the four dials that you can actually be in control of in growing relationship. Time. It's, it's quantity of time, but it's also quality time. Quality time. And this is very important. And it, there, there's, a, there's a pacing to time. It's very important. Sometimes we do a lot of marriage stuff. I mean, we are married. We do marriage stuff. But we also talk about marriage a lot. And sometimes sitting on the couch next to each other, watching a movie or watching a football game, it might be quantity time quality time for somebody might not be for the other person you have to talk about what quality and quantity look like in your life with your friends or your relationships but here's the thing um, velocity and intimacy are enemies velocity and intimacy are, are enemies there's a pacing there's a time that needs to be rolled out that's helpful for any relationship Okay, you, you cannot have something intimate, something close at a high rate of speed. Two objects approaching each other at a high rate of speed. They may, they may get together, but it's called a collision, not a connection. So the first thing we look at with relationship is, what's our time like? I'm not just talking about time with God. I'm talking about time in any relationship. What's our calendar like? What's our daily schedule like? Who gets our best time? You know, the time where you're actually awake or caffeinated or whatever. You're, who gets the best time? Because whoever gets the best time, that's where relationship's going to grow. And you've also felt, if in any of these, when you have more of it, relationship grows. When you have less of it, you see a diminishing of relationship. One of the biggest things I, we hear about friendships or marriages or even with parenting, it's like, you never have enough time. Never have enough time. So time is the first dial that you can turn up or down in any relationship, including relationship with God. Energy. Our best energy. Who gets our best energy? The absolute best that we have. You know, in, in relationships, you can only tell a story for the first time once. This happens a lot of times with teenagers. They, they, they share great stories. Kids are going to share everything with mom or dad or stepmom or whoever. Like, oh, this just happened. But now they get to teenage years and they start sharing with their friends first. And their friends get the good stuff. And then they get home. Now, maybe not your teens. But, and, and we love our teenagers. We, this is the best part of our life. We love our teenager family. It's awesome. But there are times when they've had all this stuff happen in school and they get home. How was your day? Oh, it was good. We get like version 5.0 of the story, which is dwindled down to two words. But that's what we do with our energy. We only have so much energy. Who are we giving our best energy to? That's going to grow a relationship there. That's a dial you can control. And there's also attention. Where does your mind drift? What, where does your mind go when it's hoping to be somewhere else than where you are? <laughs> what does that look like? What gets your best attention? What gets your most attention? Because who, whatever or whoever gets your best attention, you're going to have a relationship. Listen, it doesn't have to be a person. It could be a phone. It could be a phone. We can have, I can have a relationship with this phone. It gets my attention all the time. I can be mid-sentence and something. Oh, hold on. Sorry, sorry. push notification. I gotta, I gotta look at this. It can get my attention. I can look forward to it. I can, I can see a push notification and I can get, I can dread something. I can not look forward to it. I can get excited about the time I get to have with certain apps on my phone. This can be a relationship. A car can be a relationship. Anything can be a relationship. 
if we give it our time, our energy, our best attention, and of course our money. You know, it's amazing. I feel like the nicer the car, the truck you get, the, f- the further you park away from the store. Anybody notice this? <laughs> it's like you're, you're parking in Alabama because you just you want to make sure that no one's scratching your car, you know? You, you have a not-so-great car. You're, you're tempted to park in the handicapped spot. I mean, you're right up there. I mean, you are as close as possible, okay? That's what happens with money. Wherever our money, it's not a bad thing. Listen, I'm not condemning anyone. But wherever our money goes... Our heart goes there too. You want to know if someone cares about somebody? Is money going towards that person or not? Especially in the dating relationship. So these are four dials that control much of our relationships. Where are we spending our time, energy, attention, and money? Most of relationship difficulties are because one of these dials is low. One or two. Ah, we don't have enough time together. I feel like you're present, but your mind, your attention is somewhere else. You know what? I kind of feel like I get leftovers of your energy. We don't have enough money. We, we can't do that thing. Or we're putting too much money here and we want it here. These are the four dials of relationship. And these are the four dials of relationship with God too. I feel so distant from God. I'm not sure where he's at. Well, let's look at the calendar. Let's look at my energy. Let's look at my attention. Let's look at my money. These four areas are all connected to our hearts. And wherever they go, relationship will grow. And wherever they don't go, relationships will die. That's how it works. That's how our heart is set up. And so wherever our team goes, relationship grows. The more we give our team to someone or something, the more our heart is attached to that person or that thing. And again, it can be anything. I mean, it can be anything. It can even be, you know, trying to fit in or be impressive. It can be on social media. It it can be anything. And so I just, I want you to, anytime we're talking, um, whether you're, you're making a text note to yourself, you're writing notes in your phone or you're writing something down, we want to be... We want to be open all week to what is the Holy Spirit putting on your heart. He knows you by name, specifically. He knows exactly that situation at work. He knows that problem at the house or the apartment. He knows that you need new struts on your car. He knows. I mean, whatever it is. And he wants to speak directly to you. So don't miss it. If there's anything that we say that feels a little bit spiritually weighty, like, ooh, hmm. Just write it down. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Anything you want to say about that? I just say, isn't it, isn't it so kind of God to invite us into relationship? So if there's a part of you that feels like, but I don't have time for that, like that's another thing as opposed to that's the source where I go to get love and receive joy and peace and patience not, not apart from him, out there doing a bunch of stuff and then, okay, God, thanks for today. But like from him. God's not asking us to do a bunch of stuff for him, but to sit in relationship. Sometimes we describe it in this team growing relationship with our kids. I would say as a mom when they were little. So we've got six in eight years. So they were, I mean, I'm double fisting the toddlers. We adopted a sweet one out of foster care. They're all all over. And people yeah, will be lots like, Lots of little people walking around. Are you still pregnant? No, it's a new kid. So in that space of <laughs> saying, <laughs> saying, I could get them dressed for school and out the door. But if I have been ugly and dishonoring to them and their heart is covered with yuck, they're not ready for the day. Where is it we are trying so hard with our team? to impress people or show up on time, but we've like dishonored one another in the process. God, what would it look like to give you our best time? God, you already know what the day holds. Your mercies are new every morning. God, what what are you up to today that we could simply partner with you? Instead of having a to-do list with all my energy and attention and things I'm going to do with my time and asking God to bless it, God, you are way more brilliant than I will ever be. Like, you are wisdom. 
what is it you want to do with today that I could simply partner with you to love you and love others well? God, I even have these two things. They both require my energy and attention, and I only have limited amount of time today. God, which one are we doing first? Y'all, he's amazing. He's the best at everything. And so if we really want his input, he will be kind to give it because he wants people's hearts well. Not just everybody showing up on time, dressed, and our heart like unclothed. <laughs> what would it look like to let our minds and heart be covered with God rather than even your energy and attention? Mm. Maybe in here, tonight even. Your mind is racing, thinking about all the things you've got to do, or you're replaying, women, all of the conversations you had. Should I have said that? Should I have not have said that? It's this, God, what if you could bring peace to what I pay attention to? What if money didn't control the decisions I made? God, you could show me where it is I'm generous, where it is you have enough, just a different way. And so sometimes this week we'll say some things and you'll be like, I don't know about that. That's okay. We might have spaces where we unlearn some things. So there's space to maybe see from a new lens, a new perspective. That's good. And so when you, when you go back through some of the Old Testament passages, whether it's Ten Commandments or even things that Jesus did, what you see is God putting boundaries around things like money. Oh, hey, there's, there's a tithing situation here. Or there's a generosity situation here. Why? Because God needs your money? No, he doesn't need my money. He wants our hearts. And he knows money is just a part of the team, but it is a part. And when they had Sabbath and when they were supposed to pray to God, and these are all great boundaries to ensure that people's team was going towards him. And so for many of us, this is a very practical thing, which means it's very shareable with other people. Think about a difficult situation right now in your life, especially a relationship. Something you're struggling in or something you wish you had better in relationship. And you can literally track your team contribution in that relationship. You can, you can look at your calendar. You can look at time. You can think about your best energy. Where's that going? You can think about the attention you give that. And you can track the bank account. Like this is one of those things that you can literally quantify and look at in areas of struggle. And in areas of success. I and mean, we, we have kids, youth sports is a whole nother thing, okay? We have kids in sports and they're very active and all that stuff. And, and we love sports. And we're on the soccer field or where, football or whatever else is going on. And, I mean, I have heard people say, well, this is my religion. And, yeah, I mean, that is where your time, energy, attention, and money is going. You have a relationship with that. And we have a relationship with that. But we're making sure that we have a greater relationship with other things. And so, again, wherever team goes, relationship grows. It's just really, really helpful. And so our faith is based on relationship. We can't trust people without relationship. We, we, we just can't. And the more relationship we have with someone, the more potential for trust to build. It's the exact same thing with God. Here, here's, the, here's one of the crazy things about faith. It's like God says, you know, people say, well, how can I grow in a relationship with God? It's as if God says, listen, I've already wired you up for a relationship. You, you know what works and what doesn't work in a lot of areas in your life. Just apply that to us. Like, me and you, let's hang out. What do you mean, hang out? Let's go on a date. What do you mean? Like, let's have fun together. God, what are you talking about, have fun? Put up a disco ball. Oh, we've already done that. Awesome. I mean, literally, so much of what we've grown and know in our lives, when we walk with Jesus and we look at, at scriptures, we see his time commitments. He's always getting away to have time with God. His, his energy towards his disciples and followers who just weren't getting it. His attention to never do anything unless he saw the Father doing it. That's attention. That's locked in. And of course, he was so generous in every way possible. And so, if we want to have more relationship with God, more trust, then we need to build greater uh, relationship. And there are four levels of relationship that we want to talk about. Ooh, we have eight minutes. You have eight minutes? Yeah, we do. Make See, it happen. Notice I'm the one going long. Okay. <laughs> okay, four levels of relationship. Can you 
write these? Yeah, I would, would love you? to. First My of all, you, you want to see your handwriting that. more than mine. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Okay, level one. Level one relationship is getting something. Just getting something. Level one is getting something. I mean, it's technically a relationship because you are interacting with another person. You're getting something from them. Uh, that's selfishness, of course. Um, level two is you are getting and giving. I mean, you're getting something from someone and you're giving. And, and there's a lot of margin here. Right, there's, you can sometimes be getting more than you're giving, sometimes you're giving more than you're getting, but there's still self-protection. You're still holding back. There's still something protecting you. Level three is giving without getting. Giving without giving. And this um, is selflessness, right? And for a lot of times in our world, this feels like it's the, it's the top. This is the pinnacle. I mean, giving without expecting to get anything in return. I mean, what could be more a higher level relationship than that? Well, God, God shows us what the next level is. The highest level is giving that hurts. Giving that hurts. And that's sacrifice. And in a world, well, this is the world that we're experiencing at least, in a world where no one is willing to sacrifice, no one will feel truly loved. In a world where no one sacrifices, no one will truly have the highest level of relationship. And God goes first. God always goes first. I love that about our God. Jesus is like, oh, I'll go first. I'll show you what this looks like. What's required for the greatest level of relationship. For God so loved the world, right? That's relationship that he gave sacrificially his only son. This is the highest level of relationship. In Romans 5, 8, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. John 15, 13, no greater love than this that to lay down one's life for a friend. Giving that hurts is the highest level. And it's called unconditional love. Which I, th I think that phrase gets confused a lot of times. Unconditional love is, is literally, okay, let's talk about Ange and I. Un for me to unconditionally love her means that regardless of her condition that she's in and regardless of my condition that I'm in, I will sacrifice for her. Regardless of her condition, regardless of my condition, I will choose to sacrifice for her. That's crazy. But that is unconditional love. And in a relationship, I know that may not be everybody in the room, but in a marriage relationship or any friendship for that matter, when only one person is doing this and not the other, it hurts. You see, we know these levels of relationship because if you've ever experienced a level four relationship when someone had your back and they sacrificed for you, they didn't just give not expecting anything in return. They sacrificed for you. You know what that's like, how fulfilling that is, how much you trust them. The reverse is also true. Many of us have longed for a relationship like that. Maybe growing up, we wished a mom or a dad or someone would sacrifice for us. Even now as we're older, we wish our boss or someone would sacrifice for us for just a hot second while someone sacrificed. And you know the pain of it. We, we know the fulfillment of it if we've experienced it. And we know the depletion and the drain of it if we've never experienced it. And God says, I'll go first. I'll show you what level four relationship looks like. And I will invite you into it. Regardless of your condition. I love invited. this. There's a space where I think really well intended because you've got an honor culture and there's this beautiful like southern hospitality thing that goes on in the south. But this heart of if you've ever caught yourself saying like, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're grateful. I owe you. It's like somewhere we're keeping some tally list of like, okay, if you did that, then shoot, I got to do that. Or maybe I'm glad I did it because they were at least helpful. I want to say two things to that. God loves a cheerful giver. Yes. But what would it look like to just receive 
And then in moments when God asks you to bless and give, you, you do that. Because what happens when we start keeping a list of, oh, she helped me, he helped me in that time of need, so I owe him, you stop asking people for help. Because now you're afraid, well, I, like I'm struggling. How in the world am I going to help them? If they help me, then what are we going to, I don't have anything to offer them. And so the second thing I want to say is this is why Jesus is the best on every level, always. Ted just said, God goes first, and he does. But there's this beautiful moment on the cross, tons of beautiful moments, and the most horrific tragedy and the most grace-centered sacrifice ever, where Jesus says, it is finished. Those three words, y'all, are the best, this heart of, I've actually covered all of it. There's no more list of like, okay, if you do that for me, then I owe you. God's saying, I've got it. What do you need help with today? I will offer it to you. Do you need more patience? I can download it. What do you need to let go of in your heart so it's not hardened, so there's a place for more patience to go? God gives all of himself all the time, and what changes is our capacity to receive. So God, is there anything else I'm storing up in there that's not of you, that if I would stop keeping a tally list of giving and getting and just say, God, you have sacrificially given to us, what would it look like, God, for you to increase my desire to want to be generous, to be generous with my time, to be generous with my best energy, my best attention, with my money, knowing that, God, you have enough because it doesn't land on me. I'm not running the show. God, you are. And you are a trustworthy father. You're a trustworthy boss. You're the best CEO. You're the best friend. You actually have everything we need if we would slow down enough to receive and simply say, God, how could we partner with you to love you and to love others well, that we would be thrilled to look at level four. What does that look like as opposed to, uh, there's no way. No, it's not all the things all the time. Just a few people in a few places that he trusts you to have impact and he trusts you to be honest, to ask for what you need in some of those relationships. So as we close tonight, we're just getting started, but as we close tonight, it's important for us to understand faith is more about relationship than rules. Because relationship is what builds trust. And specifically, the highest level of relationship is sacrifice. And so I challenge you, we, we challenge you to look at your closest relationships and do a little bit of a team audit. Just a team audit. Where's your time, energy, attention, and money going? And then also this idea of it's not just what you know, your potential to understand, your IQ. It's not just your emotional awareness, your EQ. I believe the greatest component of any relationship, including with God, is your SQ, your sacrifice quotient. Mutual sacrifice of two people over time. More mutual, mutual, both people, mutual sacrifice over time. That determines the strength of your relationship. God's already done his part. What does it look like on our end? And that's a conversation between you and him, and we're going to continue that conversation. I know we have wrestled with that. Like, I am so generous with my time with other people sometimes instead of her or my family, and it's not good. I think there's about 32 and a half hours every day. That's me. So this is a good time to work with God, not only in your relationship with him, but those closest to you. Okay, let's go ahead and pray. And then we'll have one last song. I thank you so much for who you are and that you're actually a God who wants to be known. So thank you for scripture. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for a way that there is space and opportunity not only to know you, but to allow ourselves to be known by you. God, thank you that you're not ashamed of us. You know all the elements of our story, past, present, and what's coming. And you're excited to journey with us. That we could know what it is to be in your presence, to actually live loved, not searching for it, but already knowing everything we need is in you. And as we spend time and energy and attention and invest our resources in your kingdom, there is a way that our soul experiences rest. 
Lord, we love you. Continue to search our hearts, oh Lord. We come to you for comfort. We come to you for cleansing. Continue to work on us, sharpen us, that we might be all that you have created us to be. And God, I pray that you will bring clarity in these next few days on our next steps in relationship with you. Not because you want to shame us or condemn us or say, come on, you should catch up by now. No, 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 no. Because you always have more. You always have more full life for us. Continue to guide us, please. In Jesus' name.